Okay, okay, we're going to get to the podcast in just one minute. But imagine I gave you the opportunity to invest in Microsoft, in Apple, in Tesla at its infancy. And now you made all this profit and it would be unbelievable. You'd be so thankful and so grateful. I believe that that day is today for Torch. Because for the next 36 hours, every donation you contribute at givetorch.net is doubled by our generous matchers, and you can come in at the ground floor. Yes, last year, over 1 million people enjoyed our podcasts. You as well, I hope. And I believe we can get to 10 million this year, but we need your help. It's only one day a year that we ask. We need your contribution. We need your partnership. We love your partnership and your friendship. Please contribute at givetorch.net, givetorch.net. Every dollar is matched. I apologize for taking your time. Thank you so much in advance for your support. Enjoy this episode. You're listening to Rabbi Arya Wolby, Director of Torch, the Torah Outreach Resource Center of Houston. This is the Jewish Inspiration Podcast. Welcome back. We're going to do a short and sweet segment on Shabbos Parshas Shkolim. This week is the first of the four special parshas that we add to the weekly Torah portion. So this week's Torah portion is Parshas Mishpatim, as we know, from our weekly Parsha Review podcast. So we're going to read the portion of Mishpatim, and we're going to call up all seven people to the Torah, and they're going to get their aliyahs for Parshas Mishpatim. But then we're going to take out a second Sefer Torah, and from that second Sefer Torah, we're going to read from Exodus chapter 30, verse 11 to verse 16. And these five verses are going to be about the machzis shekel, about the half shekel. And that's why the name of this Shabbos became Shabbos Shkalim, for the portion of the Shkalim that we read. So what, what really, what's the history of this and what's going on? It's always the Shabbos prior to the month of Adar. So let's get some history here. First is, what was the shekel? The shekel was given by every person. A half shekel was given by every person as part of the census. So we're not allowed to count Jewish people. When you see five Jews sitting together, you don't say there are five. You don't count them. One, two, three, four, five. When we count even for a minion, we don't count for ten. What do we do instead? Instead, what we do is we count, we can count heads, There's other things you can count, but you don't count the people. You don't count Jews. Why? Because the Torah tells us by Abraham that your children will be so many, they will be uncountable. And therefore, we don't count Jews. For a minion, what people do, and this is the most common way, is that they'll say a verse that has 10 words in it. Hoshia et amecha uvarech et nachlatecha ureim v'nasem ad olam, which is 10, that verse has 10 words, and once you count the word per person, that's so, but we don't count Jews. Okay, that's the first thing. So how did they count the Jews? They would count the shekels. Every person would give a shekel, and that shekel, that half shekel, and then they would get all the shekels together and start counting all the shekels, and that's how they knew how many Jews there were. Okay, so that's reason number one. That's what the background, a little background on the shekel, on the half shekel. But then there's something else that we need to understand is that the shekel was used. What was all that money used for? That shekel was used for all of the offerings, all of the communal programs, all of the salaries that were paid for the judges in the Sanhedrin. They all needed to get paid. How did they get paid? That's how all of, all of that, those shkalim, all of those con- contributions, that's how they had money for offerings. There were daily offerings. There were weekly offerings. There were celebratory offerings that were brought in the temple. Who paid for all those animals? This was the communal tax, so to speak. When was that money given? It was given by the first of Nisan. By Rosh Chodesh Nisan, that's when everyone needed to give it. So a month prior, which was Rosh Chodesh Adar, which is going to be this coming week on Tuesday and Wednesday, that's when they started making the announcements. Everybody get ready, get ready, because the time for giving the shkalim is almost here. It's only one month away. So that's a little bit of the history of the shkalim, but there's something more that we need to know about this. 
So first is, is that there was equal participation. Every single Jew gave the exact same amount. There's no such thing as, oh, well, I'm poor, so I can't give. I'm wealthy, I can give more. Everyone gave the exact same amount. Because at the end of the day, you're not counted by how much money you have. You're not counted by how much fame you have. Every Jew was counted as an individual. Every Jew was counted as a unique part of the Jewish people. There's no one who's higher. There's no one who's lower. It's the example we've given when we talk about the menorah. The menorah, why is the menorah? Every light of the menorah needs to be on an equal level, height. Only the shamash can be higher because the shamash represents the Almighty. The candles of the menorah represent the Jewish people. And that's why you had the menorah in the temple had three branches on each side, each one representing two of the tribes, and the light always faced, the light of the candle of the menorah always faced the center. But they had to be equal height. Why? Because although we might be different camps, we might be different styles, different talents, different abilities, we have to remember that at the end of the day, no Jew is higher than the other. We're all equal playing field. And while one might be more righteous, one might be more religious, one might be more talented, more gifted, it doesn't make you a better. It makes you more obligated. And what we see here with the half shekel is that everyone was counted exactly the same way. The verse also, so the verses that we talk about when we talk about the shkalim also talks about atonement that is achieved by participation in the half shekel. A solitary human being can very rarely survive divine scrutiny. What person is free of sin and shortcomings? Nobody. We all have issues. We've all had things that we've done that perhaps weren't on the up and up. But when the nation comes together, it ascends to the higher plane. That's when we get to the highest level, is when we're able to be united as one. And here, the half shekel was done united. Everybody was part of this half shekel. It was a low enough amount that every single person can participate. And therefore, it was also a sign of atonement. Now, where does this shekel come from? The shekel also comes from an atonement that the Jewish people needed for the sin of the golden calf. Where they needed to show that they weren't going to be self-indulgent anymore. They weren't going to run after their own temptations, their own desires, but rather they were going to be a willing to let go for the Almighty. Now, we all know, we've talked about this, the importance of being part of a bigger group. A minion. You want to pray for something? You can pray yourself, and you should pray yourself. But there's a higher level when you do it together with a quorum of people. When you do it together with more people, the more people you have, the greater the impact, the greater the influence, the greater the possibility that you'll be answered. And therefore, we go out of our way to do something that is in unison, together, everybody together. That's why we pray with a minion. We want to do it together with everyone. You have a much greater likelihood of overcoming challenge and receiving the proper atonement when you do it together with everyone else. That's point number one. Point number two is that, remember, what happens in 14 days after Rosh Chodesh? We have the holiday of Purim. What happened in Purim? What happened in Purim was that Haman goes to Ahasuerus, the king, and he says, here's all of this money. He gives thousands and thousands of gold and silver coins. He says, take these coins. That's for the taxes you're going to miss out by killing all the Jews. Here, you have all the coins. So the Gemara says, what do the Jews do? The Jews preempt their coins, meaning on the heavenly realms is all of these coins there are all of these coins being contributed to harm the Jews. So what do we do? We preempt their coins, the coins of Haman, and we bring our coins and show God, we show the heavenly realms, look, here's the coins of the Jewish people. 
Here is the coins of self-sacrifice, the coins of commitment to the Almighty. And these coins should stand in front of the holy courts of, of the, of the uh, upper realms and to remove all evil decrees. And that's why specifically the Shabbos before Adar, which usually is about two weeks prior to Purim, we're already preempting. Now, we also do the half shekel, and we do that on Tanis Esther, the day before Purim, the fast of Esther, where you go into synagogue and you'll have the half shekel there, and everyone can give that half shekel to the congregation. It's a custom that we do it in commemoration of the half shekel that was given by the Jewish people in the desert. So, my dear friends, this is a little bit of a short insight into Parsha Shkalem. The Shkalem portion that we're going to read this Shabbos should be a time for us for reflection for introspection, for getting ourselves to a place where we're ready to accept the Torah on Purim. Because what is Yom Kippur? Yom Kippur is called Yom Kippur because it's Kippurim. It's Kippurim. It's like Purim, our sages tell us. Purim is not a day, yeah, we all know we get dressed up and we get uh, we can become slightly inebriated and we have a festive meal and we read the Megillah and we do the mitzvahs of the day of Purim. But our sages say that's just on the external part. On the internal part, it has the power of Yom Kippur. It has the power greater than Yom Kippur because it's all revealed on Yom Kippur. On Yom Kippur, we're there and we're present. On Purim, we're hidden. That's why we have masks. We get dressed up because it's behind a veil. We're able to internally, completely connect ourselves with the Almighty and, and accomplish the atonement that we desire. Hashem should bless us all that Shabbos Shkolem, this week, this portion, when we bring out that second Sefer Torah, we should be able to connect with what it means to let go and let God. Have a great Shabbos, my dear friends. You've been listening to the Jewish Inspiration Podcast, a Torch production. Become a supporter at torchweb.org because your assistance enables more Torah learning around the globe. To find more lessons offered by Torch, please visit torchpodcasts.com. Until next time, stay fresh, my friends, and get jiggy with it. Na-na-na-na-na-na-na. Na-na-na-na-na-na. <laughs>